Who likes being a family? <laughs> I like it a lot. All right. Are we a special family? Do you guys feel special in this family? All right. We want to keep the family together. Nothing can break it. So because of the circumstances, we are moving to Las Vegas. Hey everyone, how are you doing today? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I wanted to talk about season two of Sister Wives because I've made a couple videos where I've had some comments about just the Browns fleeing Utah and how much bullshit it is thought to be. So I wanna go back to season two and talk about this, this just mad dash to get out of Utah because Cody was like gonna get arrested. Every day that we're here, our family goes, deeper and deeper into the fear of what could happen. Uh, oh, this is extremely important. Guess what? You can't tell anybody else. If we say there's a potential that our dad could go to jail and our family would be split up. TMZ is a, the press found out basically that we're moving. And so we were going to leave tomorrow morning, but now because of that, we feel the need to absolutely get out of here. We wanted to get out of there before any more press came to our door. The cleaning we were going to do, everything like that, we're not doing. We're having family come in and take care of the rest of it. We are going to load as fast as we can and go. Viewers have been talking for a while that, well, yes, polygamy is a class three felony in Utah, or at least it was at the time. The Browns were really not in any danger of being prosecuted. Cody was really not in danger of being arrested. And that is what I wanted to talk about. So Sister Wives premiered in 2010. It is important to note that in 2006, a little show called Big Love really took society by storm it was a really incredibly popular show on hbo and because of that show polygamy was entering the mainstream conversation more and more and i think that that is part of the reason why tlc wanted to capitalize that on that and cast the browns in this show so pre-sister wives sister wives 2010 big love comes out in 2006 Big Love ran till 2011, I believe. So it really overlaps there just a little bit. But Christine was actually on an HBO documentary talking about polygamy. Additionally, she, in 2008, she was on an episode of 48 Hours advocating for polygamy. So they were already in the public eye. The show maybe catapulted them into a bigger under a bigger light, but they certainly were already like loud and proud polygamous. I will tell you, I spent a long time last night trying to find clips of Christine in the HBO documentary or the 48 Hours episode, and I could I came up with nothing. Um, I'm not sure why I couldn't necessarily find anything about the HBO documentary, maybe because HBO has now moved on to HBO Max, and maybe they didn't carry over all of their footage regarding Big Love. That's what I suspect, but I don't know. I'm sure someone, is if it is out there lingering, we'll probably comment on this video where to find it. Um, and with 48 hours, and I, I struggled with the 48 hours, you cannot find anywhere seasons before season 24 of 48 hours. I mean, 48 hours is, how many times can I say 48 hours in this video? Uh, I'm gonna stop right now. So that show has been on since the 80s. So there's literally like over 30 seasons of the show and you can't find anything pre season 24. At least I couldn't without, you know, I don't know, pirating something, which I'm not going to do that. And yeah, she appeared. It looks like she appeared on season 21. So I just couldn't find it. But what I did find. So do not worry, I did find something because lo and behold, the TLC Sister Wives subreddit comes through in the clutch. You guys know I'm like, the, I'm probably the biggest fan of the TLC Sister Wives subreddit. I don't post in there. I just like re, you know, I don't know. I'm just a fan. I'm just a lurking fan and for, for lack of a better word. So anyways, if you haven't discovered it, go to the TLC Sister Wives subreddit. 
two years ago, because I was looking in there, I was like, maybe someone posted a clip in there of one of these appearances. Couldn't find anything. But what I did find was this clip from the BBC. This was posted two years ago in the Sister Wives subreddit. But this is actually from before Robin even joined the family. Meet the Brown family. Three, two, one. Okay, Chanel's kids, raise your hands. Woohoo! Okay. Mary's kid, raise your hand. Wahoo! Okay, Christine's kids, raise your hands. Why? Let's hear the wahoo. Come on. All right, there we go. Cody, the father. Christine, one of his three wives. The other two are out working. And they're 12 children. We have 11 brothers and sisters, 12 including me, and then there's three moms and one dad. It's known as a polygamous marriage, technically a crime that thousands of Christian families in Utah believe is decreed by biblical law. Anne Wilde has begun a campaign to lobby the Attorney General and others to legalize polygamy. Dozens, including the Browns, converged on the Utah government. But then, why didn't the Attorney General arrest them? There are tens of thousands of polygamists in Utah uh, who practice polygamy as, as adults in a consensual relationship. It is a felony. Uh, but we only have 5,000 prison beds that are full as it is in Utah. In our society, there's this natural jealousy and fidelity issue that comes up. Does that come up in your mind at all? Or well, you know what? Jealousy is a natural thing that people do deal with. But honestly and truly, my relationship with my husband is only going to be great if his relationships with his other wives are great. My jealousy is when she's doing favors for the other wife when I need something. It's true. <laughs> and the pluses? In-house entertainment, constant childcare, and lots of hands to help around the house. So at this time, Savannah was the baby of the family. This was, they hadn't, I mean, there's no mention of Robin. There's no mention of courting a fourth wife in this clip. So I found that very interesting. And Christine is the only wife that actually appears in this clip because Janelle and Mary had said that they were at work. In the clip, something I found very interesting is that the reporter asks, well, if polygamy is illegal, why haven't you been arrested? The literal attorney general at the time was also interviewed in this clip and his reasoning was like, yeah, polygamy is a class three felony, but we have tens of thousands of polygamists and 5,000 beds for inmates. So you literally couldn't go after everyone. You literally have bigger fish to fry is what the attorney attorney general was getting at. And the reason why I wanted to do this video is I've made a couple videos recently where I talk about how Christine over the course of of the show has talked about her fear of Utah, her fear of going back to Utah. And then when, you know, pulling me was all in all intents and purposes decriminalized. She really, really, really wants to go back to Utah. And I've had a couple people comment saying like, I live in Utah. Like there's polygamists everywhere. She was never going to get in trouble. This is BS. And so I really wanted to kind of research that a little bit more. And I was like, yeah, this, mm, I suspect some frauding, um, frauding for ratings, I suspect. I will say that I understand if Christine does live with an element of fear in her life because her upbringing was a literal shit show. And I made an, I did make a video probably a week or so ago about her great uncle murdering her grandfather. And like her great uncle was like a serial killer and it was like crazy. So she has a very traumatic story to tell. Additionally, not only that, but her mother left, decided like polygamy wasn't for her. She wanted out of her marriage. And when she left Christine's father, Christine and all of her siblings took the side of their father and didn't speak to Annie, Ruth Ann, Annie, Christine's mother, for many years. And we do see Annie on Sister Wives. She does come to live with Christine for a period of time. But there was a contentious relationship there for quite a while. 
We also see on the show when they go to this panel discussion to discuss polygamy, Christine is really apprehensive because her biological aunt is going to be there and she is going to have to face her aunt who is also a very outspoken spoken critic of polygamy. With all of that being said, I find it really fascinating that Christine, she is probably the most, I would, in my opinion, and you guys, maybe you have other opinions, but in my opinion, it always seemed like she was the biggest champion of polygamy in the early seasons. She wanted the family, not the man. She always wanted to be a third wife. Like the hierarchy of power didn't matter to her. Really, I think she just wanted to be the new fun one for always. Um, But, you know, and then Cody decided to get a fourth wife and that kind of blew up in her face. But you know, she always wanted to be a third wife. Her dream was to live polygamy. She always wanted to be in polygamy. She stopped talking to her own mother because her mother decided, no, she didn't want to be in polygamy. So we have Christine, this big champion of polygamy, but Christine has all of this trauma in her background, in her childhood because of polygamy. And I just find that really an interesting juxtaposition there. And it's probably Christine's coping mechanism. It's how she deals with this trauma is to put on like an overly bubbly and positive face. That's just my suspicion. But I just find that so interesting. Personally, for me, when you look back on it, and you know, season two was a long time ago, it was 10 years ago at this point. When you look back on it, I, I think it really is pretty clear that this move was ratings based. Like, oh, this is this new show about polygamy. We're fresh off the heels about a fictionalized show about polygamy. We got to give these people some drama. We can't just be the, you know, boring Cody with multiple wives and kids. And Cody is an amazing dad and polygamy is this like, you know, utopia. We can't show that. So what do we have to do? We have to flee for our lives in the middle of the night from Utah. This move, when they told them, and it was really fucked up the way they told them, it was like they told the older kids, and then they told the whole family, and I, I'm not sure where they cut off the older kids from the younger kids. Mariah clearly had a heads up that this was coming, but, you know, they say, oh, yeah, we're moving, and we're moving in three days. Oh, and you can't tell anybody. It, that is wild. If you're like a 10 year old and you're getting this news, it's like, oh my God, what are we going to witness protection or something? So Mariah and much of the kids are sitting, some of the kids are excited, of course, but you know, a lot of the kids are devastated to hear this. And Mariah is especially devastated because Mariah at the time, she was having trouble in public school. So she was actually going to a private religious school and she was really happy at that school. That school was giving her a, a lot that she was looking for at the time from what it looks like. And she literally had a list of reasons why her parents should let her stay there and finish out the school year. Even Aspen and Madison came to her aid and were advocating like, this is a terrible decision for Mariah. Like Mariah is really happy at her school. And, you know, Cody was basically like, tough shit. It was just really heartbreaking to watch that. There was one funny moment, if you go back and watch this episode in season two, that I've that just gave me a chuckle. And everyone's moving, you know, everyone's freaking out, just, you know, everything's chaos. And Janelle has a box, and Janelle's kind of just moseying about the kitchen, and she's like, I guess I'll pack up some books. And Logan's like, I already packed up all your books. These are just your cookbooks. And I found that particularly funny, because we all know Janelle hates to cook. She hates to do anything, you know, housewifey. She would rather work. And we know Logan was like making all the breakfast. The Browns had this three day deadline that they gave themselves for some reason. And then they pushed it to four days because they found a big house that they could rent and wasn't available till the Tuesday. And then all of a sudden, like they heard police sirens one day. So they decided that they had to just like go with the clothes on their backs essentially and just leave all their crap behind. They left a huge mess in their Lehigh house. And one of the wives said like, oh, our um, our family is just going to come in and clean everything up. And I was like, well, well, that's pretty shitty of you, but okay. 
And this seems to actually be a trend for the Brown family that they leave, but they kind of leave chaotically and they leave a lot of stuff behind. We see Mary return because, you know, the Vegas houses, the cul-de-sac houses didn't sell right away. And at one point, M Mary was still going back to her Vegas house. And there was still like a ton of stuff there. It still looked like someone completely lived in that house. So this seems to be a trend that the Browns just kind of, there's no organization to their moves. <laughs> Allegedly, when the first episode premiered of Sister Wives season one, Utah local authorities decided to open an investigation into Cody Brown. But this is really interesting because Cody Brown and their family were polygamy advocates. They were attending like legislature hearings. They were they were petitioning Congress to decriminalize polygamy. They they were on the radar, but apparently once the show premiered, they did open an investigation into the Brown family, but there was never any formal charges brought. Cody and his family were never criminally prosecuted. And from what people have told me and from the comments that I've gotten, it really was not big, con like a really dire concern. Yes, it was a felony, but do people actually prosecute that felony? It was like they're, they really, they had been living for for many years in Lehigh, I think like five years at that point, and very, living very out and very openly and very you know, advocating very openly for polygamy, this really wasn't a concern that he was going to get jailed over it. In 2011, Cody actually, Cody and his wives actually sued the state of Utah over the constitutionality of this polygamy ban, and they actually won that lawsuit. We know that Cody moved his family a lot over the years, a lot. Vegas was actually the place they stayed the longest, and they stayed there less than a decade. Their kids have doc have talked about like dozens of moves, like 12 to 15 moves that they've made over the years. They've lived sometimes all together. They've lived sometimes with Janelle, like literally out of state. These poor kids have literally not had any kind of stability in their lives. And when you look back on the times that the kids like were so devastated by impending moves, Gabriel had a problem. Um, we saw Peyton have an issue. Mariah is breaking down in season two. It's really heartbreaking that you see that, you know, while the moms, they do advocate for their kids to like stay put ultimately it's whatever Cody wants and whatever like the majority wants so let's say two moms want to leave and one mom's like well my kid's really happy in the school well tough cookies we're where we go one we go all is Cody's life motto and it also seems to me that Cody just thrives on chaos all of these moves that we see them make over the years seem to be like maybe they wanted to move maybe they were toying around with the idea but then all of a sudden Cody gets that's like this, I don't know, like revelation for re lack of a better word. And then all of a sudden it's like, we need to move now, not, not tomorrow. Now we needed to move five minutes ago, like pack all your stuff up. We got to go. It doesn't matter if we're, we have anything to go to. We just need to leave where we are. I mean, that that's what the Vegas move was. And it literally just baffled viewers. It made no sense. Christine throughout the series talks about her fear of moving back to Utah because of the law, the law, the law, the law. They do admit that the culture in Utah has changed and that the people in Utah don't really care if like, you know, the Browns live next door and they're polygamous. Um, but the law, the law, the law, the law needs to change for Christine to feel safe. And on the one hand, I get that. I mean, you know, you if you are actively breaking the law, you could be prosecuted at any given point. But was there that real threat when they were actively advocating to decriminalize polygamy all along? They have this family, their good friends, the Dargers, who have appeared on the Sister Wives series over the years, they were very like loud and proud polygamists again, like the Browns were. And they stayed in Utah and they advocated, they did marches, they petitioned the legislature. They did all of these things openly. A very, I mean, they're a very well-known polygamous family in Utah and they stayed and they've never been jailed. 
So I don't know what you guys think. Uh, make, make sure you let me know down in the comments. Do you think there was a real and present danger that the Browns had to leave because they were going to be prosecuted because Cody or the wives could have been jailed because of their lifestyle? Or do you think this was like a ratings grab, that this was something to do for dramatic effect for the show? That is like where I'm leaning towards. I do think, I mean, obviously it was against the law. They could have been prosecuted, but it just doesn't seem like it was very likely given how openly they were living at the time before the show even premiered. And just from what people have said who live in the area and who say that like there's tons of polygamous families and it's, it's kind of just people look the other way about it. Now, I will say on the one hand, you know, maybe they didn't have fear of prosecution and maybe that was a tad unfounded, but there have been like governmental raids over the years on these polygamous like compounds where, you know, suspected child mistreatment is happening and ch children have been removed from home. So I can't say that the mothers, especially their fears that they might be separated from their children because of their chosen lifestyle. I mean, if, if you've seen it happen, I can't really blame you for having that fear, but I do think it's a little bit of a different situation when it's like a compound and they're, you know, they're already under the government's watch versus just, I I don't know for lack of a better word like the polygamist next next door so anyways you guys let me know what you think down in the comments make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel follow me on instagram and twitter at reality squad and i'll catch you guys in the next video take care have a good one much love